Hello and welcome, my friends and viewers, to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw and talk about monsters, characters, gods, and other things from D&D 5th edition, all while giving a small but quickly digestible history about them. Together we'll go over their origin and history within the game, how they're utilized in the modern edition, and how you guys can utilize them in your own games. This week we'll be going over one of my favorite ooze-type monsters to use in any game that I run, the Gelatinous Cube. Also referred to in scientific terms as an athcoid, the Gelatinous Cube is a large transparent ooze shaped in the form of a cube, or if you want to get fancy, a rhombohedron, composed entirely of a mindless jelly-like membrane. It was created by Gary Gygax and has existed in Dungeons & Dragons since its first edition, taking inspiration from media such as the Blob and the Slimes from RPGs such as Final Fantasy. And typically, a gelatinous cube stood at about 10 to 15 feet on each side and could weigh as much as 50,000 pounds. In the rare occurrences that an ooze had not already consumed a victim, the gelatinous cube is completely transparent but is capable of reflecting light off of its surface. However, it is far more common to witness the occasional random object floating within a well-fed gelatinous cube's body, which can oftentimes give away its position to adventurers. Despite its very clear shape, the gelatinous cube's body is actually very moldable, flowing around objects in narrow spaces before returning back to its original form. This does little to aid in their pursuit of potential victims, however, as the gelatinous cube's speed is really only 15 feet. Regardless of the slow movement, however, gelatinous cubes are still very dangerous to encounter. While mindless, their transparency makes it very easy for a hapless adventurer to walk right into its body, trapped and unable to do anything but silently scream as they are slowly digested over a long period of time. Cubes could normally be found within crypts and vaults, often traveling down paths that yield the most food and absorbing any and all materials that they walk across, making them technically omnivores, but that's up to debate. All organic material that they consume, however, is quickly dissolved within their acidic body, leaving only materials like bones and armor or metal floating within it before the cube naturally expels it. An adventurer can easily identify a gelatinous cube by one of two things, either by its leaving of a slimy trail of its own essence, or discovering an unusually clean path stretching far off into the distance as the cube devours everything in its slow-moving path. Cubes are also functionally blind and deaf, but are capable of detecting movement via vibrations in their surroundings, as well as being drawn to areas with high temperatures. Gelatinous cubes reproduce asexually by budding or osmosis, with these offspring being much more rubbery than their parents. Due to the lack of intelligence, however, these baby cubes ran the risk of being reabsorbed by their own parents, but those who survived quickly grew to their traditionally large size. Sometimes a pair of cubes could temporarily fuse into one large form that acted as a singular creature, but they would eventually split apart and continue to go their separate ways after a time. In terms of habitat, as I said before, cubes normally occupied underground spaces such as caves, dungeons, and the underdark, but were always on the move to areas where they could find food and carry into scavenge. Some have even made use of these creatures' dissolving forms to clean out their dungeons of all the refuse and organisms, with other creatures cultivating cubes to grow large enough to engulf entire rooms from floor to ceiling. When dealing with gelatinous cubes in combat, their go-to strategies are to either bludgeon their foe to death with their pseudopod attack, or to just immediately engulf it and render it unable to fight or move. The reason as to why victims engulfed by the cube are unable to escape is because the cube's oozing acidic body also contains a paralyzing substance that is immediately absorbed through the skin. Those who survive being consumed by a gelatinous cube often bear scars that resemble partially melted wax, which I personally think is awesome because I love giving scars and memories of adventures to my characters, but let's continue. Gelatinous cubes are also immensely durable despite their lack of mobility, capable of knocking over large enemies and taking harsh blows. They're also immune to electricity and mind-altering effects due to its lack of sentience, but it is said that cold spells or environments can whittle down its malleability and leave it vulnerable. Furthermore, the creature is unable to be blinded, charmed, deafened, exhausted, frightened, or be knocked prone due to the fact that it has no legs and it takes up its entire space. Physics deems that you can't exactly knock a cube down. When using gelatinous cubes, I often like to deploy them in ways that prevent the players from seeing them right away, such as in places with magical darkness or even underwater. The darkness lowers the chance of reflection being seen on the cube's surface, and water allows the cube to be camouflaged even if it has things already floating inside of it. Usually I'll get lucky and it'll engulf a player, but once the cube is discovered, it's usually a pretty quick battle. However, if you want to give your cubes a little bit more longevity in the fight, my suggestions are to buff their speed and to give them two pseudopod attacks instead of one. This can take the form of a particularly aggressive cube that is not eaten for a long time and needs to bludgeon its meal to death before consuming. Additionally, you could have a combat where the party may have been split and cause them to battle against two cubes, one being deployed for each half of the party. Over time, you can forcibly push the party closer back together before the two cubes merge into one all-powerful super cube, further heightening the tension of the battle. For some gelatinous cube-based characters and quests, one of the best NPCs I have ever used is a goblin ranger who has a gelatinous cube as his animal companion. 
Keeping the cube in a bag of holding lined with acid-resistant moss, the goblin has a number of ways to deploy his ally in combat. They can simply have the gelatinous cube rise up and take over most of the party's attention while the goblin pelts the party with arrows from afar, or they could even encounter the goblin alone before he completely snatches one of the players into his bag of holding and thus shove them right into the body of the cube. Without any sign on their friend, the party would probably just assume that he's currently trapped in the bag, and then when they cut the bag open, suddenly a cube spills out with their friend inside. Perhaps the goblin is a bandit who uses the cube to dissolve the bodies of their targets so the goblin may not get caught and also parcel through whatever inorganic items may be left, such as gold, weapons, and so on. This could even be an interesting concept for a player character, so long as you talk to your DM about it first, of course. Next, we have what I call the Demon Cube of Jubilex. This character concept builds on the idea that in D&D lore, many believe that all oozes have some form of ties to the great ooze archdemon Jubilex, the Faceless Lord. And thusly, this cube is risen to sentience and has been gifted a degree of fiendish powers from their creator. Stat block wise, you could slap some abilities from any demons or even the fiend warlock subclass onto a gelatinous cube stat block, with the Baylor and the Marilith demons being my particular favorites to draw from. Regardless, this ooze's plan is to perform the same rites and rituals as any great demonic cultist, seeking a way to summon Jubilex onto the material plane to wreak his normal havoc. Your players can chase down clues to the cult and to the head priest's identity, but make sure that you as a DM make them think that the cult's leader is a person. Once they arrive at the final battle, they will discover that the head of the plot is not a mortal, but an intelligent ooze who commands the favor and power of the Faceless Lord. It'll throw them for quite the loop before they start trying to murder it. Lastly, one of my favorite concepts, and one that I unfortunately have not had the chance to run at my table, is the party uncovering a plot for the city to be destroyed by some sort of alchemical weapon, capable of disintegrating thousands in an instant and leveling a kingdom low without any actual destruction to the structures, building, and infrastructure. Over time, the party will discover that a mad alchemist has slowly been cultivating a colossal city-sized gelatinous cube within his mountain laboratory. And as the party arrives, he blasts the mountain open and sets the cube upon the nearby city. It is now a race to prevent the cube from storming through the city and absorbing all of the people within it, dissolving them over minutes instead of hours due to the alchemist's biological machinations. Its massive form will sweep through all windows, doors, nooks, and crannies, leaving nobody to be safe from a lengthy, acidic doom. I really can't wait to drop this plot in front of my players one day, and I hope that you guys get a chance to use this, because I want to know how it goes over at your tables. And lastly, for our homebrew magic item this evening, we have what I call the Cube Trap. This item is consumed upon its use and does not require attunement, taking the form of a small, glassy green cube that fits in your hand. As bonus action, you may drop the cube in a 10-foot space anywhere within 30 feet of you, and upon landing, the cube grows in seconds to a 10-foot by 10-foot gelatinous prison that engulfs all within its radius. These targets and anyone who enters into the cube space may make a DC 15 dexterity saving throw or be restrained and suffer 1d6 acid damage every round that they remain inside of it. To escape, they must make a DC 15 strength saving throw at the end of their turn, and creatures of large size have advantage on the saving throw. This item does not work on creatures of the huge size category or greater, and after one hour the cube dissolves harmlessly. This item is particularly great for trapping up enemies who have bunched together, or is really good for cutting off pursuit by throwing the cube behind you to fill up the wall, warning off any chasing enemies or forcing them to risk being dissolved by being caught in the trap. I have included a stat block for the item in the description below. So that is the gelatinous cube everybody, I want to thank all of you guys for watching, and if you guys like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, press the little bell icon, and share this video to anybody that you think it might help, be it DMs or players alike. If you guys want to vote on the next video, please go into the community tab on my channel, or you can follow the link in the description as well. This week it's going to be characters, with our votes being Levistus the Archdevil, the hero Strongheart, and the villain Kellek. The last two being seen recently within Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Please cast your votes below and let your voices be heard. And please let me know how you guys have used gelatinous cubes in your games, and also what you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.